Welcome to this tutorial on creating an infographic. You may be asking yourself, why create infographics? To answer the question, let's look at a statement from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC states, public health and safety rest in large on people's access to information they can use to protect and promote their health. Your faculty recognize the importance of communicating current and accurate research to the public. They want you to develop the skills for effective communication. Infographics are a tool that can be used to help disseminate health information to the public. A key to this assignment is the visualization of data. Let's explain what that means. According to the National Forum on Education Statistics, data visualization is the process of graphically presenting data to reveal its patterns, trends, and meanings. As we look at this infographic from the CDC, we see several images but not all images are visualizations of data. In the first example, we see that one person is highlighted out of three. For your assignment, that example would count as a visualization of data. However, neither the image of a coffin beside the text, nor the images of brain or heart are visualizations of data. They are images but they do not represent data. The gauges would count as data visualization. If you take away all the text and numbers, we can still see the gauges represent approximately 75%. So on this infographic, we can see two different types of data visualization. As always, read your assignment carefully before you begin. Note the number of data visualizations needed and types allowed. Let's look at some additional examples. Which of these two images represent a visualization of data? Did you choose option A? If so, you've got it. Remember, when creating data visualizations, accuracy is key. Which of these two examples is more accurate? Choice A or choice B? If you selected choice B, you are correct. Choice A is representing approximately 25%, but the text states that it is 16%. The visualization is not accurate. Your assignment begins with a research question or topic. Topics should not be too broad nor too narrow. If your topic is too broad, can you identify a specific population or focus on a particular outcome? Your next step is to gather your sources. Remember you need one peer-reviewed scholarly source. Your additional sources must come from authoritative sources in the health sciences, such as the CDC, World Health Organization, or the American Cancer Society. Choose your sources carefully. When looking at your scholarly article, check the results section for data that can be visualized. Once you have your sources, take time to organize your thoughts. Create a basic layout of your design. What content do you want to place in each box or section? Organize your thoughts ahead of time. This can save you time in the long run. Over the years, we have had some feedback on this assignment from both faculty and students. Faculty have reported that the visualization of data has been the greatest problem. Some students thought the images represented data. Several of the visualizations did not accurately reflect the data presented in the scholarly article. Faculty have also expressed concern about the quality of the sources being used. 
students have reported difficulties working in groups. Some infographic tools are designed for single users, not simultaneous users. Be certain that any password shared is unique. Other students acknowledge that there is a learning curve with the tools. Allow yourself ample time to complete the assignment. Let's put this assignment in focus. You will see two title slides. Which slide is a better fit for this assignment? Slide A or slide B? Slide B is more focused. It identifies a specific population. It focuses on one element of skin cancer prevention. Now, let's take a look at some slides representing data. Select which slide is more accurate, A or B. Slide A, slide B. On slide B, both the X and Y axis are labeled. For this assignment, you will need different types of graphics for your data. Look and see which visualization you prefer. A or slide B. For me, slide A was difficult to interpret. To understand the percent, you had to count each of the triangles. The pie chart was easier to interpret. Now, let's review some tools to help you create an infographic. You have many options. For this presentation, we will review two of these tools, but you can use any product you wish. One tool is PictoChart. Please note that PictoChart has both free and paid options. For this assignment, select the free choice. PictoChart requires you to create a login. If you are in a group and plan to share passwords, remember to use a unique password. This password should not be in association with any other account. After you create your account, select infographics from the dashboard. You can choose a blank template or one of the free template options. Make your selection. Carefully delete the text and type in your own content. Delete any unwanted images. From the ribbon on top of the screen, you can change the font, font color, and font size. To add a new box, click on the plus sign. It is easy to add a new text box. Just click on text from the left sidebar. To make charts and maps, select the tools tab. For this example, I selected charts. In the charts tab, you have many options, vertical bars, dots, pie charts, donuts, and gauges, and more. Use a design that best illustrates your point. Keep your reader in mind. Enter the data on the spreadsheet to make your chart. Let's take a look at one more tool, Canva. You can access this tool at canva.com. As with PictoChart, there is both a free and paid option. The free option has all the content that you need for this assignment. Select an infographic template that meets your needs or work with the blank page. You can add backgrounds from the left sidebar. Under the Elements tab, you can find images. Select the free options. You can copy and paste images as needed to create your visualization of data. Click the square from the top ribbon to change the color of your images. To make your charts, click on the More option and select Charts. Again, you have many options that can work for you. Before leaving Canva, note that Canva does have a Teams option. 
Now, let us take a quick minute to review the steps to locate your scholarly source. Start at the library's homepage, sc.edu slash libraries. Next, you'll click on the databases link right under the search box. From the dropdown, select public health. Several database options will appear. Let's start with PubMed. In PubMed, enter your search terms. Scan the titles and read the abstracts of relevant articles. When you find an article of interest to you, locate the full text article. In this example, the article is available free through PubMed Central. If that option is not available to you, click on the links from the publisher to check for availability. If there is any charge, back out and use the check for full text link. This will search our journal holdings for availability. If that journal is not part of our collection, just request through our interlibrary loan services. Do not pay for articles. Our interlibrary loan service will try to locate that article for you and the service is free. Sometimes students are overwhelmed by the number of results that they retrieve from a search. If that happens, try to take a second look at your research question slash topic. Is it too broad? If so, try to focus your question. Always try to take a close look at your search terms. Remember, AND terms narrow or focus your search. The more AND terms used, the fewer results you should retrieve. On the flip side, the OR terms expand your search. OR is more. As with any assignment, your sources must be cited. The general guidelines for APA 7 can be found on the Citation Library Guide. However, your faculty have allowed some modifications in the standard APA format. For in-text citations, you can use a numbered system. When using a numbered system, use the number one for the first citation used in your infographic, number two for the second, and so forth. Do not arrange the reference list alphabetically, but arrange the list in the order the citations appear. With infographics, the formatting can be difficult. You do not need to use the hanging indent or double space your reference list. The components of a complete reference should all appear. For journal articles, remember to include the authors, year of publication, article title, journal name, volume, issue, pages, and DOI number. Remember, direct quotes require both quotation marks and a page number. In addition to your visualization of data, you can add images to your infographic. For any images used, be sure to provide a citation and check for copyright information. For additional information on images, check the LibGuide page titled Finding and Using Images. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.